Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Connections. Today is Tuesday, October the 19th. May the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about life adjustments. Uh, things that we need to do to change our thinking, to change our trajectory, to change our habits uh, in order to obey the will of God. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Several announcements for you, as you know, or if you've been here on Sundays or watched our, uh, our services, you know there's a lot going on right now in the life of our church. There are many things that you can sign up for that we need you to sign up for. Uh, and also just a lot of events to, to put on your calendar. And so let me uh, point out a couple of those. First, our barbecue is this weekend. There's a number of things going on this weekend, this coming weekend. Uh, the first of those is the barbecue. They are buying the food tomorrow. Okay, today is the 19th. They're buying the food tomorrow. So if you do not get a chance to RSVP before the end of the day today, we're not going to be able to get your order in for, uh, for the food. And so we want everyone to participate who wants to. So we need you to either go on the website and reserve your spot and your family spot for barbecue this Saturday night at 5 o'clock. Uh, or call the church office if you can't navigate Realm or don't have access to the internet, whatever it is. Uh, call the church office. We'll get you set up. We do want to make sure that everybody that wants to participate can participate. But again, we're buying the food, so let's uh, let's get that done today. Our weekend is packed full. Again, the barbecue at 5 o'clock on Saturday. There's going to be a costume parade with kids. We need candy. We need everyone to participate. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we also need some folks to help us uh, uh, clean up and get set up. I think we still need a little bit of kitchen help. You can sign up for that on the website. On Sunday, this is our Kirkin of the Tartan service. Very important, our worship service, one worship service, will be at 10 a.m. We have a press release that's gone out into, uh, I believe, the Marietta Daily Journal and Facebook. and We're spreading around because we want everyone to show up. The Atlanta Pipe Band is going to be here to lead our tartans. We do need still some folks to volunteer and to sign up to carry tartans. If you've never done this before, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You just carry the pole down, we'll stand there, and then, then you get it when the service is over, and we parade again. So, uh, so it is a lot of fun. There are some stairs to navigate. If the weather's nice, again, we're doing this service outside. There are some stairs to navigate, so if you sign up to carry a tartan, we have to figure out how to get down those stairs if you have any trouble walking. We can do it. We can enlist some younger folks to carry it for you, and you can pick it up again at the end. Either way, uh, we'll, we'll try to make it work, so uh, we need you to sign up for that. Because the service is outside, we will have chairs available, but if you have a camp chair, if you have a more comfortable chair than our blue chairs that we use in the CLC, feel free to bring those. We're not going to set everything up in a you know, in a uniform way with an aisle or anything like that. We're going to be under the trees. We're going to be in the, you know, in the circle and uh, we'll have chairs available for you. But if you have a comfortable camp chair you want to bring, do so because that'll be, again, much more, much more comfortable for you. I think you'll like those chairs a little bit better. Uh, on Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, our youth group has their annual uh, color games, which I've never actually been to the color games. I've only seen the outcome of the color games, which are filthy, filthy teenagers colored in chalk or whatever the color is made of. Uh, and so this year I'm going to I'm going to come, and uh, I want to invite all of our teenagers. This is your your kids, their friends, their youth group, uh, their their your grandkids, whoever, all to join the youth group this weekend, three o'clock on Sunday afternoon in the parking lot. It's going to be a fantastic time. You're going to love it. That's what's going on this weekend. A couple other things. Every Wednesday from now until Christmas time, our uh, Eastminster Community Children's Choir is meeting at five o'clock in the choir room. This is going to be great. I hope that you will encourage your children and bring them out. It's up to you to bring your children. They can't get here by themselves. So bring your children out at five o'clock uh, for uh, the Eastminster Community Children's Qu Chorus. And then after that, we've got dinner, we've got activities for the children. Make Wednesday night a priority. We would love to see your family here. The Advent Devotional is coming up. You can sign up for that on the website or on this email. There should be a link. And then finally, November 7th is All Saints Day, is our celebration of All Saints. On this day, we have a tradition, a new tradition since I've been here, of gathering the names of uh, our friends and family members that we've lost this year. Uh, since since last uh, All Saints Day, so within the past 12 months, we want to honor those who have uh, graduated to their heavenly home 
by calling their names, ringing a bell uh, as a part of our worship services. And so if you have a family member uh, or you know, someone that you would like to honor in this service, please, please send their name into the church office and we will get them their name into, uh, into our worship service. Now, like what we said, that making adjustments to our lives, when we learn about who God is, when we have a, a revelation about God, that he, is, that he is King, that He is Lord, we talk about Him being our Savior and our Lord. Well, what does that mean? If Jesus is Lord, that means that we listen to what He says and we, we, we do what He says because He is the Lord. He is the Master and we are His followers. And so if we, when we come to that knowledge, there's something that has to happen within us. There's some activity that, that we're called to do, some obedience that has to take place. We're studying this in our experience in God on Wednesday nights, the adjustments that we need to make to our lives. I heard a podcast this week on a leadership podcast. The, the guy said, you know, knowledge does not uh, transform us. You may have the knowledge that you're 20 pounds overweight or 30 pounds overweight, whatever the case may be, but the knowledge of your of, of of being overweight does not stop me from grabbing that donut. You know that donut looks good. You know it's it's only when that knowledge translates into an adjustment. I have to adjust my habits in order to correct what has been revealed. Right? That's 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 what we're talking about. These adjustments. God wants to do something in our lives. God wants to do something in our community, and we need to make adjustments in order to make that happen. And Blackaby points out several examples. I'll read a few of these because these are great. Noah could not continue life as usual and build the ark, right? Abram could not stay in Ur and, uh, or Haran and father, father the nation of, in Canaan. Moses could not stay on the backside of the desert herding sheep and stand before Pharaoh. David had to leave his sheep to become king. Amos had to leave the sycamore trees to preach in Israel. Jonah had to leave his home and overcome a major prejudice in order to preach in Nineveh. Peter, Andrew, James, and John had to leave their fishing business to follow Jesus. Matthew had to leave his tax collector's booth to follow Jesus. Saul, later Paul, had to completely change directions in his life to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. You see, there's adjustments that have to be made. The question is, what is God doing in our midst? What is God doing in our lives? What is God doing in our church and in our community in which we are being called to make adjustments as an individual or make adjustments as a community in order to get in step with what he is doing? And you know how we know this? God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, through prayer, through circumstances, and through the church. God speaks to us. He really does. This is what it means to have a relationship with him. And when God speaks to us, that is when we make adjustments. When we make adjustments, we set ourselves up to obey him when he calls. And so friends, if God is calling on you to make adjustments in your life this week, I encourage you to do so. Listen for the Lord, listen to his word, and heed his voice. Because God has great plans for us to walk in when we obey. I love you, dear friends, and we'll see you soon. Big weekend. Hope to see you there.